Ooh, I'm a little sun-kissed. Look at that. Yesterday, I talked about limiting beliefs and how to discover them. And now I'll expand upon that because I published a blog post yesterday that was five simple steps to release and transmute limiting beliefs. So here is that five-step process. And the first step is what I discussed yesterday. The first step is ask questions and embark on a scavenger hunt. So the core question um, to identify limiting beliefs is what area or in what aspect of life am I getting results that I don't want? So that is the core question to uncover limiting beliefs. That's how you can uncover where you have limiting beliefs in life. And from here, you can treat discovering and releasing limiting beliefs as like a scavenger hunt. And there are more questions than that you can ask yourself too. And when you discover the, the general subject or the general aspect of life where you have a limiting belief, where you're getting results, which you don't want, then you could get into more specific questions. So let's take, we'll use money as a continuous example throughout this. So a lot of people have limiting beliefs regarding money. So um, a way to embark on that scavenger hunt is to ask yourself what your self-talk is around money. So maybe it's something like there's never enough money and that that's a belief, that's a limiting belief and it's a negative affirmation that you're constantly saying to yourself. Some some variety of there's never enough money. And another question to ask yourself is how do you react to situations? So if you react to your financial situation with helplessness or with disempowerment, or with sadness or anger, that's another telltale sign of limitation. But if you react to your situation with, with hope, or with empowerment, or with a list of actions that you're going to take, that means you're, you're more empowered and there's not that much of a limiting belief. So if, you, if you're reacting in a negative way, chances are you have a limiting belief in, in that area. So that, that's the first step, is the questions and embarking on a scavenger hunt. And the second step is writing down the limiting belief. So writing down is, it's like almost magical, the way that externalizing something gives you that sense of objectivity, and it gives you like a catharsis, because you're getting it out of your brain and onto paper or onto the computer or something like that. So you're more able to objectively look at it and writing something down is a form of expression in and of itself. So that's how it can be very, very cathartic. So you'll be able to, to write it down specifically what your limiting belief is so you can examine it from there instead of it just being in your head or you being in denial about it. And the third step is to recognize that it's basically your opinion and not necessarily truth. So a limiting belief is your perspective. It's your opinion and it doesn't make it truth. So it's very important to recognize that because if you view a limiting belief as a truth, you're going to lock yourself into it. But it's really just your interpretation, your perspective, your opinion. So it's not ultimate truth. Remember that. And the fourth step is to change your thoughts until the belief changes. And I call this belief transmutation because a belief is just a pattern of thoughts that you think over and over again. It's a pattern. So you have to have a sense of mindfulness regarding your self-talk. So you catch yourself on a daily basis when you get into these, these negative, um, this negative self-talk. So like with money, I, I brought up the belief there's never enough money. So every time you say that phrase or a variation of that phrase, like I don't have the money or something like that, you replace it with something more empowering. So you have to catch yourself as you're thinking or saying those kind of limiting phrases out loud 
and replace them with something more empowering. And you have to do this on a daily basis, multiple times a day. Because if you change it, if you change a thought over and over again, you've changed the belief. Because a belief is just a pattern of thought. So you're breaking the pattern one thought at a time and creating a new belief. And hopefully you're creating a more empowering belief. So here, here's a list of affirmations regarding abundance with money and wealth and things like that. So you would substitute the there's never enough money limiting belief with an affirmation like this every time that negative self-talk arises. Something like these. I always have more than enough money to meet my needs, wants, and desires. I delight in the financial security that is a constant in my life. I am open and receptive to all the wealth in the universe. I always attract whatever I need for a glorious future. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. Wealth constantly flows into my life. My actions create constant prosperity. I am aligned with the energy of abundance. So those are just examples of some affirmations to use to replace those limiting beliefs with. And you can come up with your own or you know, twist one of those to make it more suitable to your purpose. So it, it's going to be different depending on your specific limiting belief that you want to replace and what you want to replace it with. All right, so here's the last step. The fifth step, and that is constant, I mean, consciously change your actions based on the new belief. So it's basically taking action like your belief is already a reality. It's almost like the concept of fake it till you make it. Because when you act like something is a reality, it becomes a reality. Act like you believe what you want, and then the reality unfolds that way. It will eventually become your reality. So with the limiting beliefs around money, again, we'll use that example yet again. So instead of feeling guilt when you spend money, say you're at the grocery store and you feel guilty that you're spending $60, have gratitude. Show gratitude for, for the ability to spend money. So you're replacing guilt with gratitude. That is opening yourself up to more abundance just with that simple, that simple mind shift. So instead of having guilt around money, you're having gratitude around money. And uh, um, one more is to stay open or actively pursue more income. So whether that's, it's a raise at your job or getting new streams of income, anything like that staying open to new opportunities and things like that instead of just complaining. So that's another aspect of abundance versus limitation with money. And another strategy that I personally use a lot to break the limiting beliefs regarding money is to not let money be the biggest factor in every decision you make. So most people make all of their decisions based on money. And that really solidifies limiting beliefs and a mentality of limitation. And it doesn't mean you have to go around spending extravagantly and, and things like that. It could be very, very simple. Like, um, here's an example that I used in my article. If you're craving almond butter, allow yourself to splurge and get the $10 almond butter. And don't feel guilty about the, the five more dollars that you're spending. So in this case, you're, you're prioritizing your happiness <laughs> over $5. And a lot of people place $5 over their happiness. And this is a very simple example. You can also apply this to more big picture things as well. And again, it doesn't mean go spending extravagantly and throwing your money around. You have to use discretion. But apply this strategy of not letting money being be your single biggest factor in every decision you make because money will only control your decisions if you let money control your decisions, okay? And this, this principle of, um, of acting on your beliefs, so taking action in the real world like your beliefs are already true, 
it's so applicable to everything. There, there are so many examples. Like if you have the limiting belief that you're weak, physically weak, act like you're strong. Go to the gym and lift weights. Do that every week and you'll gain strength every week. If you have the limiting belief that you're a bad writer, act like a writer. Write every day, and after a year, you'll be a better writer than anyone you know. <laughs> and another one is if you think you're bad at, let's say you're, you're a nerdy guy who has the limiting belief that you're bad at talking to women or bad at approaching women. Get into a habit of approaching women. Approach 100 women over the next month. I bet you'll be smoother than anyone you know after you pro approach 100 women. So this principle applies to everything. You need to visualize the action and actualize the vision. Because you can't just use these affirmations and just sit around and wait for things to happen. You have to meet the universe halfway. You have to meet the law of attraction only works if you meet it halfway. It works through action. Attraction has action in it. And another metaphor that I like using is that the steering on a car only works when the car is in motion. So you have to be in motion to steer your car. <laughs> All right, so that's the, the five-step process to release limiting beliefs. And I highly recommend you try this out. Uncover your limiting beliefs. Treat it like a scavenger hunt. Be open to finding them, okay? You, you have to be open to finding your weaknesses and things like that in order to grow. You have to do this shadow work. You have to release what's holding you down and treat it like a scavenger hunt and use the process and you will release limiting beliefs, all right? And one more thing, with um, steps four and five, so the affirmations to replace the limiting beliefs and taking action like the belief is true, do those steps concurrently. So you might have to do them for like a month with some deeply ingrained beliefs, but some weaker beliefs or that aren't as ingrained might take just a day or two to get rid of and replace with a new belief. So yeah, that's all I got for today. Try out the process. Peace, peace, much love, and one love.